Hi everyone, we're Mike and Trisha, and along with our wee dog Kira, we're on tour in France in our new Swift Carrera 144 camper van, exploring the country while putting the new van through its paces. In our last episode, we had a bit of a market haul in saint Ambo, and we also took in some of the sights while enjoying some reasonable spring weather. But we've moved on now, and things have taken a turn for the worse. I'm just out of my bed. I wasn't expecting to be putting this hat on or this little buff. I wasn't expecting to put it on again this year, but I am because I've just looked outside and there's a whole lot of snow out there. Right, Kira, you're gonna have to get your tanky on. Your little tanky. And we thought we'd finished with this for this year as well. Right, let's have a look. I think the snow's actually still on. Yeah, it's still on all right, but I think a lot of it is actually falling down off the trees. I'm kind of hoping that there's a thaw. It seems to be a mixture of snow and light rain. So sleet, I would say, more than snow at the moment, and big drips coming off the trees. Come on, Kira, this way. Right, I've got a bag to drop off at the rubbish, so it gives me a chance to show you a little bit of the campsite. I'll just be quick, because I want to get back, and we need to have a chat, Trish and I, and decide on what we're actually going to do, because we don't want to be hanging about in these kind of conditions. So this is the barriers to this little campsite area. Well, campsite, it's not actually a campsite, it's, uh, it's one of these camping car parks. Camping de Preguda, it says there, and that's a very wintry looking gate and very wintry looking barriers here too. There's a little plan there of the campsite. There it is, keep calling it a campsite, it's not, it's a camping car park. It's all lots of little bays and it's on a little bit of a slope this one as well. We managed to find one that was relatively flat quite near the bottom. Now I suppose the best I can do at the moment is uh, clear the snow off of the van so that we can see outside and just keep an eye on how the weather's progressing today and we'll sit down and have a cup of coffee when Trish is out of bed and we'll check the weather forecast and make a decision on what we're going to do. I should have something in here that's going to help me. The good thing about these is they have these extendable poles so you can use this to get the snow off the windscreen. That's the theory anyway. It's quite a good reach on this. It seems to be doing quite a good job. That snow has got to be a good three inches thick, I would say. And it's completely covered over the front of the van. The sides do not look as if they've got any, which is great. Uh, so the snow's maybe com been coming in this direction. We'll just get it off the front as well. I do think there's a thaw on. It feels to me like there's a thaw on. The side of the van here is all fine. Obviously there's going to be some up on the roof. There's not really a great deal I can do about that. And round this side of the van, again, there's nothing really to worry about. It's just all on the front. But that at least lets us see out the front of the van. And it'll help us just to keep an eye on it today. It's definitely thawing. There's lots of drips on the roof of the van. And the motorhome that was two bays down, he's decided to go for it. Yeah, he's away. Whereas we have actually decided to sit it out today, haven't we? Yeah, we've got enough provisions to last us, so we're fine. We have, yeah. We're just going to sit it out because we've looked at the weather forecast and the weather is definitely going to improve over the next couple of days. Tomorrow's to be better. And we've decided, haven't we? Yeah. I think we've decided. So we're currently at bromont la -Moth. Yes. Right, which is beside Clermont Ferrand. And we're going to go over towards Bordeaux. There's a little site there. Le Sac. Le Sac, yes. 
And so that's... I think it's on a vineyard or something. Uh, is it's, yeah, it's a wine producing area. Well, Which it would is, be at Bordeaux, wouldn't yeah. it? Which is always a good place to park up for a few days. Yeah, we might be able to find ourselves a <coughs> bottle. <coughs> All right, Kira, it's okay. It's another motorhome decided to leave. So that's the plan anyway. We're just going to keep ourselves warm today. We've wrapped up. We brought all this warm clothes with us all the way to France and I was thinking we're not going to need all of this warm clothes. I'm glad we brought them now. Yeah, well we had them obviously for coming down from Scotland because we left at the end of January. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I packed all mine away and vacuum packed it, put it in my box, thought that's it, don't need it. And well, lo and behold, I've got my thermals on. I'm yeah. jumper on. Anyway, we're just going to stay warm and keep the doors closed as much as we can. Play cards or something like that today. Watch, Watch a little bit of Netflix or yeah. something. And that'll do us for today and we'll pick up in the morning. Well, I definitely made the right decision yesterday. We decided to just hunker down, have a day in the van and sit it out and hope that the snow would go. I did think that there was a thaw on yesterday and I was definitely right because today there is a little bit of snow but hardly any really. None to speak of at all and it's definitely warmer. I do love a good moving on day, don't you? Yeah, I love moving on day. New yeah. places, exciting. This little site it's very campsite -y, isn't it yeah i think it will it certainly looks like it used to be a campsite and camp and car park have bought it over oh, they've taken it over yeah uh, and just brought it into the fold as a camping car park but yeah. it's it's not really all that suitable for a lot of big motorhomes i think there's lots of little bays but most of them are not even it's on a hill i'm quite glad to be moving on to be honest yeah i mean it was nice and quiet um, but there isn't a lot here. Yeah, yeah. And who was right about just hunkering down and sitting out the snow? Well, the other thing is, if we had moved on, we would have been away down somewhere nice and warm by now. Well, who knows? But that was the decision that we made. It was. And onwards to the next place. Yep. We're in Lusac and it took us about two and three quarter hours to get here. It was motorway all the way and it was tolls, so at least it got us here. We just wanted to get here and get away from the snow. And because of the rain now that we've got here, we're not really going to do much this afternoon other than hang about the van. Tomorrow morning we'll get up and we'll do a little bit of exploring. Well, it's morning here. All that snow that we had is a distant memory now. We're just going to go out and get a little bit of play with the ball, me and Kira, while Trisha finishes off her hair. And then we'll maybe have a wee walk into the village. Come on, Kira. Kira has some ball play, then I get her lead on while Trisha hangs Kira's towel out to dry on the van with a couple of magnets. Then the three of us head off to explore the village. Le Sac is a small village in southwestern France. It has a population of around 1,200 people and is almost all surrounded by vineyards. Our walk into the village will take us past the old church. It's quite a steep pathway up the hill and we're glad that the weather is on our side again. The church completely dominates the centre of the village and next door, its neighbour is the mayor's house. This is a vinatonium, whatever that is. I guess that's what it's for. There's a map here and I stop for a look. It shows us the way to the Chateau de Lissac, 
it's an easy enough place to find, the sign on the gate is absolutely huge. It's too early in the season for them to open, but we can at least get a peek through the gates. And it certainly is an impressive looking building, but that's all we're going to get for now. So we head back to the centre of the village where Trisha nips into a couple of shops and then we head back to the van admiring the cherry blossom on the way. It's in bloom much earlier here than it is back home. I think we just beat the rain. We did. Well, cheers. You cheers. managed to pick up some local plonk? Yes, I did. It's just vineyards kind of that way. <laughs> all right, okay. So, vu Molan Noir. Yeah, well, it tastes all right. It's very nice. I'm liking these little pizza things pizza that you made. Pizza baguettes? Yeah, again, this is a local baguette, isn't it? Because yep. I saw you cutting the bread and it looked delicious. Yeah, so one sesame and one's plain. And then it's some of that bread pesto stuff. Yep. With the sun-dried tomatoes. Yep. A little bit of ham and some cheese. For you, ham, yeah, just cheese for me. Mmm. Mmm. A taste of France. Mmm, perfectly with wine. So we'll just need to see what happens this afternoon because I really did quite, quite fancy going out again, but the rain's on, so I'll play it by ear, eh? Mm. We've had our lunch and we're heading out for a wee walk. Apparently there's some kind of monolithic feature. Megalithic. Megalithic feature. A large prehistoric mysterious rock. And it's about 15 minutes away. Yeah, so we'll go for a walk. Yeah. Come on. This whole area is wine producing right across this field, as far as the eye can see, it's grapevines. And I suppose in a few months' time, they'll be hanging with fruit, won't they? Yep. We had a feeling that the weather might change, so we put our weatherproof jackets on, and it's a good job that we did. We're quite relieved when we see a sign that says Megalith 200 metres ahead. But there's a bit of a slippery slope here. We're careful going up and we're getting wetter and wetter all the time. Do you reckon it's up this way? Ah, there's a sign. What does it say? Megalith. Megalith. Oh, at last. Come on then. Wait till you see this impressive hunk of rock. What do you think? It's a hunk of rock. Aye, it's a stone, isn't it, basically? Well, at least I found you some shelter. Are you getting in? Uh, I'm not, like, two foot. I'm small, but no two foot. Well, you wanted me to get you out of the rain, didn't you? Have you seen that? What? It's like a bowl with a channel. They reckon oh. that they'd maybe they'd, it was carved for the druids. Oh, I see, right, OK. To have sacrifice. Oh. And then the blood could drip down. Oh, gargle, 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 gargle down gargle, this And then channel. they just have something here to catch it. And apparently there was remnants of a Gallic vase found underneath here. Are you just here. making that up? No, I'm not making that up. Oh. It's true. And that's why this is of so importance. More because of the channel dug out. I know. I should have more faith in you. I would never suggest <laughs> that you make things up. Would I? No. Right, why don't we get out of this rain? Well, you can climb in the megalith. I'm off. I'm not doing any such thing. Come on, we'll head back for a cuppa, shall we? Yep. That's the best idea I have had all day. We made it back, back at the van, and the sun's come out and we're a little bit drier than we were earlier, aren't we? A wee bit, yeah. I'm glad to say. Anyway, what do you reckon? Moving on again tomorrow? Yeah. I think so too. I mean, it's a lovely little place, but there's not a great deal to do. No. So I could feel another planning meeting coming on. <laughs> what do you think? Glass of wine, planning meeting. Glass of wine, planning meeting, and we'll decide on maybe get a pin out and shove it in the map or something. Yeah, yeah. I fancy south a little bit. More south, More yeah. south, yeah. more south, more or a bit more of the sun, eh? Yeah, that'd be good. Look out for that one. You'll find out where we end up. See you, folks. Bye. Bye.